I want to talk about churches and big dogs coming up next on Pastor Bob's Coffee Break. We walk by faith, not by sight. That's a cool mug, isn't it? On the other side, it says, man of God. I love this mug. Very heavy, very nice, and keeps my coffee warm. What kind of coffee, you say? Headbangers Brew. And Headbangers Brew, as you know, is our very own coffee. Proceeds go to help the homeless. And folks, we have that. We have our poster of the month also. And that's this right here. Quit playing the church and be the church. You can download that there with the mugs and the t-shirts and a whole lot of other things. Right here, we are metalwearefamily.com. Well, here's the question for today. Dear Pastor Bob, I grew up in a very legalistic church, and then I married a man I met in that church. We had a very difficult marriage as I was mistreated from the very beginning. I got out of both relationships. Now I have a deep hatred for church in general. I know it isn't healthy, but I don't know what to do with this anger. And, you know, there are so many people who feel this same way, that have some resentment, some hatred, some frustration, some hurt from past experience with church. And I get that. I understand that. And I know that there are many people around who feel this way. What do you do going forward? Well, the first thing we do is be the church. And, you know, we defined church a few months ago with one of our posters. It was this one. This is a building. This is the church. In other words, church is not a building. Church is people. And church is people loving people. Yeah. You know, one of the greatest uh, problems in our society today are honestly legalistic churches, and Jesus hated them. Well, hate is a big word, but in a spiritual sense, he did. And he called them names. He called them broods of vipers and whitewashed fences and things that were kind of cuss words during that time. And he says, be careful of these people. And be careful of what they're doing. These were the religious leaders of the time. And many of those practices could be compared to some of the churches we have today. Now, just because a group of people meet in a building doesn't mean that they're bad. Just because they have a church building with a steeple and an altar and pews doesn't mean it's a bad place. I love that. But what it does mean is if the focus is here instead of here, then we have a problem. If it's on the building, if it's on the organization, more than it's on the people loving each other and moving together in harmony, then we have a problem. You see, it's all about being the church, not playing church, but being the church. So what do we do with all of this? Well, take out your Bibles with me, if you would. This is such a great scripture. I'm excited to share it with you. Hebrews chapter 12 and verse 15. And uh, again, I'm reading from the Amplified Bible. And it really goes into detail in this verse. I love this. Listen, exercise foresight and be on the watch to look after one another to see that no one falls back from and fails to secure God's grace, his unmerited favor and spiritual blessing, in order that no root of resentment, bitterness, or hatred shoots 
forth and causes trouble and bitter torment, and the many become contaminated and defiled by it. You know, right there is a really good description of many churches that I know. Whether they're meeting in a building or not, relationships that I know, people that I know, this is what happens. And it tells us, here's what you do to make sure it doesn't happen. <clears throat> Let's go through it just a little bit after I have mm -mm -mm. a little more headbangers brew. Mm -hmm. Pretty good stuff. Exercise foresight. In other words, realize that this can be a problem and think about it before you even start. Yeah. You know, we need to plan some things. Because if human nature takes over, it can get really ugly. <laughs> so exercise foresight. Begin to see, okay, <clears throat> excuse me, here are some potential problems and here's what we will do to take care of them. Exercise foresight and be on the watch to look after one another. How? By patrolling them, by shaking your finger at them, by making sure they don't... No, to see that no one falls back from and fails to secure God's grace. See to it, they don't forget about his grace in their lives. You know, grace is one of those things that, that brings love and unity to a church. Unconditional love, agape love to a church, a body of Christ. So see to it that nobody falls back from it and fails to secure it in the first place his unmerited favor and his spiritual blessing. You see, when you have that foundation, listen, unmerited favor and spiritual blessing, then you have the strongest foundation to build the body of Christ on. Unmerited favor. In other words, he said, there are no strings attached. This grace that I'm giving you, this love that I'm giving you has no strings attached. It will keep going no matter what you do. I will love you anyway. I will love you because of you, in spite of you. Yeah. So his unmerited favor and spiritual blessing. You know, God continues to bless us. He gives us all of these great things. You know, he gives us spiritual gifts so we can, you know, spur each other on toward love and good deeds, the Bible says. We talked about that last time. And so unmerited favor and spiritual blessing are the two elements that he builds in the body of Christ. And then he says, in order that no root of resentment, bitterness, or hatred shoots forth. You see, when you are focused on unmerited favor, grace, and spiritual blessing, he is agape love, then when you do that, it's really difficult for resentment and bitterness and hatred to grow. In order that no root of bitterness, resentment, hatred grows, shoots forth and causes trouble and bitter torment, and the many become contaminated and defiled by it. And that's what our friend, the, who wrote the, uh, the question has gone through. It causes trouble and bitter torment. Torment, that means it just keeps festering. It, it keeps poking at you. It, that hatred continues to grow and grow and grow. And the many, and I'm sure she's not the only one in the church who's gone through this, and the many become contaminated and defiled by it. Yeah. So once it happens, what do you do? You go back to the beginnings. You realize the church is not a building, it's people. And you realize that we're not here to play some kind of game. We're here to be the church. And what is that? Well, it's love, love, love. Love God, love others, love you. Agape God. Agape others, agape you, 
unconditional love. And folks, when we begin to exercise this kind of, of, of love and action towards each other, some exciting things begin to happen. This is truly the church. And don't forget Acts chapter 2, verse 42. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching, to the fellowship, to the breaking of bread, and to prayer. We covered that last week, but those were the four elements that made the church strong and continues to make the church strong. Well, we're going to be talking about this a whole lot more as we talk about Be the Church and what does that look like. And uh, once again, people say, well, how do I ask questions? Questions at PastorBob'sCoffeeBreak.com. That's very simple. Write to me. I have a lot of them yet to go through. Uh, there are a whole lot of questions that you're asking, and I love that. But keep writing. I'll get to it eventually. And uh, we'll continue to answer them here. So also don't forget to sign up on the email list. It's getting more and more difficult with social media these days. And I, I don't want to lose you just in case. And, uh, and so I've lost many already. Uh, we've been ramped down so much. There are thousands of people that can't find us now. And so um, please sign up if you're watching this today. Please go there now, sanctuaryinternational.com. On the very front of the page, you'll see a place to sign up for the email. I'm, uh, I'm sending those out today. So um, once a week, a new one goes out, and I'm excited for you to be part of it. Our family. We are metal. We are family. So don't forget, you are blessed. So go and be a blessing.